Okay, today we'll look at how to deduce the right anomalous body from IP on the ART sections using five basic uh, parameters. My name is N.C. Gideon. Um, N.C. Gideon is a geologist in geophysics and a trained mind planner. I, I think I, I need to indulge some of us that are actually joining us for the first time to please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channels after watching this. Like keep us going, and also most of the questions, please keep them coming. We'll reply. If you don't reply, please ensure that you have some questions. We'll reply because you can actually um, send out some messages um, through uh, via our emails, via our, all the handles that actually are going to post on our YouTube channels. Uh, this data we are using here is the data we are, we acquired using our, our geomative IP ART sections. And most of the time, some of the following some of the questions that we are getting, some people will want you to make some videos on other kind of data acquisitions and some sections interpretation. Uh, we are making some of these videos, following some of the videos we made before, for some people to actually learn through this. Also, if you, there are some other locations you might want us to make videos, or you think um, that something you actually want to um, get to know, please just eat us we will actually do that don't fail to subscribe to our youtube channel so now we're going to look at how you can actually deduce the right anomalous body from ip and the ERT section along the section line possibly your section line is between zero to 500 meters or zero to 1000 kilometers or two kilometers as the case may be what we are using here i think we are, what we are using here is about 400 meters a section line to a depth of about 100, 100, 110 meters and all that with a spacing of about 10 meters. So um, I want you to understand that sometimes in sections, you might see some different kind of anomalies. So you look at which one are you going to prioritize? How do you remove what they are going to prioritize? You know, how are you going to pick which one because you should understand that for you to actually look at some of these targets, it involves a lot of money, a lot of costs, and all that. So you do want to actually start picking targets and picking targets that you might not actually, uh, you will actually drill and mix, or you drill and you, you drill up for four or five times, or different, uh, you know, different fire before actually getting to the right normally. So now it's just all about trying to pick something you can prioritize before you pick other ones. We are not saying that you're going to disregard other ones, but we want to see what you can use to actually say, okay, these are prioritized anomalies along this section because sometimes you might see three, four, or two anomalies. So which one do you pick? So you are going to look at some of these parameters. Now, the five basic parameters, number one, will be the consistency of anomaly. We're talking about the consistency of anomaly. Consistency of anomaly is just that when you look at the profile line one, look at profile line two, what you are seeing in line one, line two, are you seeing it in line three, are you seeing it in line four, depending on the kind of deposit you're actually looking at for, you know, especially when you are dealing with deposit that are actually structurally controlled or deposit that are actually infilled. So you need to understand that this deposit might be, uh, there's some kind of projection that this has to be uh, continuous, you know, when they're not continuous and they sometimes you will see them abruptly discontinuing and in some other line, you see them appearing with a kind of shift. You've got some kind of experience like that. So you might know that definitely with that kind of uh, shift, you might start looking at, is it faulted block or something? And you also look at, if there is a shift, you look at the depth, is there any drop in depth? You know, these are the things that might tell you that maybe that particular location might be actually be faulted and also. So you might use some other kind of uh, method and evidence to see, is it actually faulted? Or not so consistency along the line is very very important then secondly you look at the depth of occurrence you know what is the depth the, the depth where you're observing the the upper body or anomaly rather you know so what is the depth the depth you are looking at in particular line are you seeing the same kind of anomaly occurring in the same depth in the other line or are you seeing it you know so the depth there must be some uniformity Kind of consistency and from you know something that will tell you that this is you know, that will be so much different. You'll be seeing anomaly at 10 meter and actually you go and see anomaly at 80 meter and you see another anomaly at 50. You know, 
you must look at what is the, the top to the anomaly, what is the bottom uh, kind of the center of the anomaly, which depth are you looking at, you know, from all these sections. So that is very, very important. Then number three is the nature of target, you know, in what they are looking at, the body, is it something in terms of seal concordant or discordant or a kind of a dike, you know, so you have to look at this. So, so this is another way you should look at them. Uh, if they're actually going to be a kind of discordant body, that is discordant, you should be looking at how it's going to be appearing and so looking at the regular, the shape of that particular anomaly. It's very important. So you need to see this, what I'm looking at is discordant because just like the example, I'm going to show you some of the section here. What I'm looking at is discordant. So um, uh, I'm not interested in something that is actually concordant with the, the actual formation. So is another thing you need to look at the nature of the normal. The fourth one is the dipping attitude. The dipping attitude is, you know, knowing where you're coming from and where you're going to, the directions of where, the, because this is actually very important when you're planning your core drilling or your target drilling and all that. So you need to understand what is the dipping attitude. It's very, very important. The dipping attitude is the westly, eastly, the northern, actually dipping to the south. At least you know where to actually um, fix in terms of your drilling, the azimuth and all that. So the dipping attitude, all of them are, are they the same thing, you know. If it's dipping in different places, you know, directions and all that, the frequency of that we should tell you something. Though you wouldn't say that all of them are deep in the same direction, now, you know, because of different kind of uh, maybe activities or the formation activities can bring about so much, you know, fracturing and dipping in different direction. But if the distances are not so much, just like having something about 50, 50 meters or 100 meter intervals, um, the, the, the frequency in which it changes, you need to actually look at the dipping direction. You know, it's very, very important. Then the last one is the visible or identifiable um, structures. Um, it's very important because when you can actually deduce some structures along the sections, you know, or lithological boundaries, because these are some of the locations that might actually act as a conduit or the passage to where some of the artillery um, minerals or, might be actually be deposited. Also, apart from that, um, you need to be actually pay much attention to the, apart from all these five parameters, definitely you should understand the geology where you're working from because that is actually the basics of your physics. You can't just start interpreting section without understanding the geology where you're actually working. Are you working in the metamorphic terrain or actually sedimentary or kind of, you know, um, ignorant um, terrain? So, you need to understand whether it's a basement terrain or sedimentary terrain. So these are the things that can also guide your decision. But apart from that general knowledge, so you need to actually pay attention to these five parameters. Now, some of the structures might be a kind of structures that are actually regionally controlled structures or some structure that may be um, locally controlled structures, especially when it comes to just like in the burning trough here. Most of the structures of the mini trough are not its, but apart from that, some of the mineralizations actually are discordant to that. They, they go orthogonal to some of the not east structures. So apart from that, you should be able to delineate some of the structures that might be in the northeast and some of the structures that might be in the northwest or south direction. Very, very important. So you need to see the consistency of so you need to also be, be able to make some other um, structural um, informations. For you to be able to see if it, they actually um, marrying or having some um, conformity with your sections. So if you look at this section now, look at this section here. This section here is actually dipping and dipping. Uh, actually, I didn't put in the west in the directions here, but this is the, the east and this is the west. So if you look at it, find out that it's actually dipping westly. You know, it's actually dipping westly, and you can see. A kind of correspondence in um, uh, um, resistivity section there, the kind of a mine very low resistivity there, and this is a very, you know, you can see the stability here is very very high. Look at look at it's above 250 here, and uh, let's look at this. And if you look at it, it is a kind of a narrow body. It is narrow body. It is it is um, 
discordant and it's dipping, you know. And you look at the depth also, the depth of occurrence. Now, and also look at the where it's actually occurring. You look at the horizontal distance here, it's about 160, 170, 180, dipping from 150 down up to, you can see this is almost about, talking about 45, 40, 50 kind of degrees because if you look at from here, down to this location. This is almost about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, 50, 60, you know, along dates. So you can see that can give you an idea of the angles. Then if you look at this also, you can see this is also dipping, you know, this is also, this section is also dipping and it is narrow and it's also occurring within that particular um, horizontal distance about, about 140, I mean 150, 160, 170, 180, and also dipping, and it's westerly dipping. You can see also this is actually having also the kind of, you know, um, attitude with what we saw in the other section. Not only that, you can also look at the depth also. The depth also corresponds to what we're actually looking at in that location. You can see the, 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 the center of anomaly here is about uh, 50 or uh, 53. If you look at here also, it's, you see, it's something we have around here, 50 or 53. So you can see. Now, if you look at this now, this is also a high changeable body, but, and also low here, but I'm going to pick this uh, over this. Why? Because if I look at other sections, I'll try to look at consistency in, in the attitude of my anomalies, you see? So if you look at here also, that is um, just a normal, almost the same thing. But the dipping are not the same thing. The direction is different, and the depth is different. You see. Now let's look at this also. If you look at this, you find out that this also also occurring also at the same horizontal distance with the other one. You see, from 140, 150, 160, 170. You can see the same. Um, um, kind of, you know, it's consistent and it's also narrow, dipping westly and other. And you can see here, uh, what we saw in the other, in the other section here, you can look at this, it is not here, it's a bit kind of disappearing, not actually very pronounced in this particular section. So you can see it, if I've shown more than this, even if it's four or five sections we've done, you can see a very consistent attitude this anomaly. So in this kind of thing, so you look at in that um, direction to pick in the just what you think that may be your priority target. Now, if you look at these, all these combined, I try to, you know, combine them here to see a kind of a corridor. You can see that this, this, and this, you can see a corridor, a very clear corridor here. Even in restivity also, you can see some um, interesting familiarity. See? See these balls here, you can see this ball here, you can see it here, and all that. So you can see there's a kind of a three geoelectric sections. Um, you can see some logic uh, units uh, around this area. See also that same thing here. Then here also see it here, see some electrical units here. But our interest is in the IP uh, anomaly, the tangibility. You can see that a very clear corridor along this. Zone. So one will actually understand that this is actually going. If, if this is my west, if this is my east. This is my, you know they can understand the strike of this. The strike is very clear, and the dip is very clear. So if this is my east, definitely most they are actually dipping westly and actually striking north, uh, north south direction. I think uh, this is just a very quick way you can actually uh, peak some of the confusing anomalies when it comes to resistivity and the IP uh, section. Uh, thank you very much. Please don't, um, don't fail to send your questions or your contributions to some of these uh, um, explanations we've done. You can also visit our YouTube or visit our website. Please don't fail to subscribe our YouTube.